Hi, I'm Nathan. I'm the founder of Restrap and this is my new custom bike that I've just had built by Woodrups. Uh, I'm going to take a couple of minutes just to talk you through the process, why I've picked what I've picked, uh, what components I've got and uh, show you some of the details. So this year I decided I wanted to get a custom bike. I've been touring now for quite a few years um, in various places from Europe to Japan to America and I kind of wanted to build something that was a good all-rounder that could take me all these places. So something that could fit big tyres on, had good braking system, so it could be on-road, off-road and just an overall uh, comfortable geometry. I think that's Probably the key starting place when you want to build a custom is you kind of need to get an idea of what it is that you want to ride and where you want to ride and what kind of terrain. And then you can sort of start building the bike's clearances and geometries around that. The obvious choice for me was to go to my local bike shop, which is Woodrup Cycles. Um, they're based just down the road from Restrap HQ. Uh, Woodrups have been known for over the last 70 years for building custom bikes for various pro racers and just the general public and um, so they've got a lot of experience in tubing and geometries and, and, and various things that comes with building a custom. I really like the idea of getting something made locally obviously we make all our products in-house here in Leeds and I thought it would be a, a great idea if I could get the local bike shop to make the bike that the luggage is going to go on and then uh, everything's basically made within that sort of one mile radius. So I went to speak to the frame builder down at Woodrup and I'd say it's important that you go with some concepts and some ideas of what it is that you want. I base these around previous bikes I'd ridden, bits of geometry, you know, bits of the technology in the bike that I liked. Once you've got that sort of concept and idea, then the frame builder will talk you through what's kind of possible and not possible. Um, so for me, the, the key thing I wanted is I wanted a clean looking bike. So I went for full Philip raised, um, but I kind of wanted an all rounder that could fit big tires on for off road, had hydraulic brakes, you know, had modern headset type, a carbon fork, um, you know, the kind of mod cons, but with a steel frame. So the geometry of bike, geometry of bikes is a bit of a mythical thing. It's, it, it's hard to get your head around and know exactly what it does. The best way I'd say to do it is find a bike that you like riding and then start there. And um, the frame builder will obviously give you some tips and tricks on what geometries, where does what. So I started off off uh, my brother Kepler actually, which was a frame that I found just fit me really well and was a, a really good geometry and size for me. And then I've adjusted a few things like the forks and the top tube angle because I wanted a bit more of a sloping top tube and a bigger headset so I could maybe get less spaces in or have a higher bar set up. So I'd say that's the key thing is get find something you like riding that you, you fit and you find comfy and then start there. I did want internal cable routing but as most people who build frames will tell you is it's a place for rust to happen it's a nightmare to fix on the road so as a good alternative what we came up with is just running full outers on the cables and you'll see on the down tube here and um, that the cables are totally covered and it just sort of gives that effect of it almost being internal rooted where you don't really see the cables that much and it also adds a bit longer life to the cables because they're not exposed to the weather Another detail I added is the brake bridge on the back here. Um, I got laser cut a little cross needles logo just to uh, tie it into the whole sort of restrap thing. And another nice detail that Woodrups do on all their bikes, you'll see this little, it's actually a spoke that they cut down onto the head tube and it just stops the uh, cable rub against the cable here. So it's, that's just a nice other detail. Um, Apart from that, you know, I've, I've kept things quite 
simple and I think that's the nice thing sometimes with a custom bike is you can kind of go over the top too much and I think you've got to remember that it's about just making a bike that works that not just has everything so for me it was the simplicity was the key. Now the paint for me was quite an important bit of it because I quite like having bikes that age well so like blacks and silvers so that I don't get too bored of them but I did want something a little bit special because it is a custom bike. Um, about eight or nine years ago we got a restrapped track bike done that was like a sort of NJS black sparkle and I just thought it was a, a cool finish for a bike so I've kind of carried that on here. Um, the paint was actually done by Kingston Customs so Jack over there he's uh, got a lot of experience in motorbikes and he does stuff for feather cycles and saffron frameworks as well as as wood ropes um, so I had a separate meeting with him to have a bit of a discussion about what it was with the paint and what was possible now initially I did ask if you can do a gloss to matte fade apparently that is an uh, impossible thing to do in paint so that was scrapped straight away um, and what Jack came up with is a really cool idea. We've got the sparkle that actually fades across the frame to the black. The silver logo is actually silver leaf that he's done that's got the Yorkshire contour lines that run through it. You'll probably notice the logo is quite low down the down tube. That's on purpose just so it's out of the way of the frame bag. One thing we wanted to do is make sure that if we were going to do that logo out silver leaf it'd be seen on camera it probably looks quite good because the frame bag's on but it's obviously it looks a bit off center when it's off but it, i just thought it was a nice detail so it wasn't covering anything up and it's something that was taken into account when doing the paint was where the bags are going to sit on it i finished the bike off with some components that i believe are the, the most reliable from over the years of riding them I've gone for a hydraulic 105 group set. I just like this group set. It's, it runs easy, it's easy to maintain. I've just never had any issues with it touring, so I've just stuck with what I've known. Uh, a few things that are important to me are so kind of like the contact points of the bike. So I've got a Brooks Cambion saddle. I just find this saddle really comfy. It's the C17. Um, so I run this across most of my bikes. Uh, I've gone for the Pro Discovery Bars and I just like these because they've got the, the flat top sections and a slight flare which just makes it a little bit easier if you're running stuff like bar bags or any kind of luggage up front you just got a little bit more room for shifting. I've stuck with Hope Wheels as a, again super reliable. I'm currently running GP 5000s. I was running Vittoria Corsas as you'll probably see in some of the promo pictures but 80 miles in, I managed to rip a sidewall on them. So I have uh, already spent quite a lot of money on uh, tires for this bike this year. So, um, and I think that's about it. The pedals are a new thing for me. Um, the DMR V-Twin pedals, I believe. They're more of a mountain bike pedal, but I sometimes over long tours get issues with a bit of foot ache and stuffy cleats. So I just wanted something with a little bit more of a platform so I could maybe run normal shoes or you know, just ride not clipped in. Um, so they're quite new, but I'm getting on with them well, so I recommend them as well. Well, hopefully that gives you a bit of an insight into what it takes to build a custom bike. We'll put uh, Woodrup's details down below, and it's also worth checking out Bespoke Show. They have a huge list of all the custom frame builders across the country and internationally. Um, if you've got any questions or want to know any more details, uh, please comment below. Mm -hmm.